So welcome back with Professor Bruno Drwenski and today we will speak about the Polish Allies and uh, I have one request for you, Professor Bruno. Uh, when you present Polish Allies, I know that most of our viewers are Poles, but there are also people uh, abroad the Poland and these uh, names like Tusk or Czartoryski, it's, it's only Poles who know them. So yeah, yeah. we are not the center of the world. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So uh, what I wanted to say is that, uh, uh, first of all, yeah, Polish elites uh, are uh, traditionally and up to the Second World War, Uh, were mostly from uh, nobility, from aristocracy, because Poland was a backward country and was not a really developed socialist country. So there was not in Poland re a real bourgeoisie, there was the aristocracy, and it's very important to understand because uh, up till now the Polish culture is under the influence, the ideological influence of the pre-capitalist uh, elite, of the pre-capitalist ideology, uh, and, and uh, 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 Poland on uh, uh, um, Poland can be considered as a, a capitalist country only now, um, and even now uh, in Poland you have no real Polish bourgeoisie. You have what uh, what was called in the Third World uh, the comprador bourgeoisie, which is a, a, a dependent from imperialist bourgeoisie uh, um, uh, uh, class, and uh, and that's the specificity, and that explains, of course, why um, uh, the Polish culture was mainly formed and uh, and uh, uh, created around the uh, aristocracy, the landowners, uh, and this is a very uh, very important because of course the ideology of the um, feudal class is not exactly the same as the ideology of the uh, capitalist industrial uh, and urban bourgeoisie that's that's first thing we have to take into account the second thing uh, it is that poland was uh, of course in the 16th century a powerful country, a powerful state, a powerful state, uh, a powerful feudal state, because at that time, what is called Poland, in fact, it was Poland plus Lithuania and what was called then Ruthenia. Um, it means Poland plus Lithuania plus Belarusia and plus Ukraine nowadays, was a feudal state um, which was exporting to Western Europe uh, uh, grain. And uh, uh, Poland was uh, really the state that uh, was feeding uh, in Western Europe and importing from Western U uh, Europe um, um, uh, manufactured products. Uh, and this led to the divide of the European economy in an e Western economy that went toward um, industrialization and the Eastern European economy, uh, which went, um, which stayed on uh, agricultural production and uh, um, um, uh, export, export of uh, grain and, uh, and wet. And this is very important because all, it explains why you had in Poland and especially in Ukraine, which was belonging to Poland at that time, um, uh, uh, you had a very strong aristocracy, uh, which was uh, uh, a state within a state. Because if you look at the Uh, richest uh, Polish family in the 16th century, they were having, uh, they, they possessed about 40,000 kilometers of land. It means more or less the uh, surface of uh, Switzerland. So you can imagine that people who are owners of such part, such big lands, um, they, they are in fact completely independent from state power and uh, they have their own policy, they have their own private army, they have their own uh, 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 interests which are not linked with the interest of the supposed uh, state they belong to. So that's one thing very important we have to know. So as soon as Poland as a state was um, uh, uh, becoming, uh, um, was beginning uh, to, to, to um, the way to, um, um, uh, to fall. Um, it means in the middle of the 16th century, 
uh, of the 17th century, excuse me, uh, you had the big Cossack uh, uprising, uh, which was to a certain extent a peasant uprising against the feudal, against the nobility, Poland began to fail. And from that time, middle of the 17th century and later, Poland began a, a, a weaker and weaker country. And uh, at that time, um, the uh, big aristocracy of Poland began, became to develop their own political uh, 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 interests, uh, sometimes within Polish institution, but most of the time and most often um, uh, cooperating directly with uh, growing powers. And especially at that time with the growing power of the region, which was the um, uh, Russian Empire. Partly also they uh, cooperated or collaborated with Austria, with Austrian Habsburgs, but maybe, but, but uh, fundamentally um, the leading, the growing power in that part of Europe was the, um, was the uh, Russian Empire and they were, uh, and our Polish aristocrats were most often, I would say, uh, 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 in St. Petersburg, uh, rather than in Warsaw, uh, which was the official capital of their supposed country. And that's very important because uh, from that time, uh, there is one characteristic in Polish elites, uh, not, of course not everybody, but a, 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 a very important characteristic is the fact that um, uh, uh, Polish aristocracy, Polish elite, uh, simul simultaneously uh, uh, with uh, elites of other little nations of Central Eastern Europe, uh, were uh, very often changing their um, their uh, masters um, according to the uh, to the uh, growing power uh, of some and the, the decaying power of others. So one day they could help the Polish king. The next day they will cooperate with the Russian Tsars. They could also cooperate with the Austrian emp uh, emperors. And it's it's very important to know that because. Uh, you have to understand then that um, the tradition of the police elite is to change their masters. And uh, that's, that explains even why, um, um, for example, um, in the interwar period, uh, what is called the uh, left or the liberal intelligentsia, and intelligentsia in Poland is mostly from uh, 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 coming from nobility, from, uh, from uh, little nobility or even from aristocracy, uh, because as I told you, there is no no bourgeoisie in Poland, so the, the intellectuals are mostly recruited from uh, f former, let's say, noble families, and it's very, and they have the culture coming from uh, uh, noble roots, um, and this is very important because, for example, in the interwar period, you had the so-called uh, 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 Polish uh, Polish uh, nobility, uh, the intelligentsia was, for example, very linked with the um, Piłsudski regime, uh, which was at that time very anti-Soviet, uh, very anti-communist, of course, and, uh, um, and, uh, um, and um, at that time uh, you could uh, think these people were uh, mostly um, uh, pro-capitalist, pro-Western, and so on and so on. In 1945, uh, when communists arrived to, to power, quite a lot of them changed their mind and became so-called communists um, or, or, uh, and went with the party because the party and Soviet Union was the leading force. Uh, after 1956, a large part of them began to, began to be revisionistic. And um, after they played a, a very strong role in the construction of a pro-Western 
uh, uh, pro-Western uh, 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 opposition, and especially they they played an important role as so-called counselors or advisors of Solidarność uh, uh, Trade Union. You have uh, quite a lot of names of them, like Geremek, like Mazowiecki, like uh, 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 Kuroń, and so on. Uh, and all these Michnik uh, and all these people um, uh, had roots. Uh, in the uh, communism first, but in a certain extent, if you look back earlier, quite a lot of them uh, uh, were linked with the Piłsudski regime before the war. And if you don't, if you understand that, you also understand what happened in 1989. Um, uh, it means the, 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 when Poland changed uh, 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 from belonging to the socialist state to, to a capitalist state, uh, in one day, I will say, in one night, uh, the party leadership, which was supposed to be communists, became, became um, liberals. And such uh, pol um, such leaders uh, of the so-called Communist Party, like Miller or Kwasniewski, uh, who were supposed to be communist in the 80s, became liberal and pro-NATO and pro-American in the 90s. Uh, and this this didn't create for them problems. Uh, it it can look very very opportunistic, very uh, very uh, uh, strange uh, for let's say um, uh, foreign observers uh, and especially Western observers or Western intellectuals. But if you uh, understand this uh, this tradition, I would say in Poland uh, of the elite to um, go from one big power to another big power uh, and to change ideology, to change, be, be, uh, um, uh, um, to change behavior, to change legitimacy uh, in one night, um, you understand that uh, um, uh, it is very, uh, very, uh, uh, um, very uh, frequent there. I, I, of course, not everybody is like that, but it's the, I would say, the mainstream um, uh, uh, um, way of thinking of the elite in Poland uh, from the uh, 17th century is to adapt to the new ruler, whatever the new ruler is. As soon as the new ruler gives them some form of power and privilege. The exception, the only exception was the Second World War. But what's, why the, the, the only exception was the Second World War? Because during the Second World War, Hitler Nazis didn't accept it to give any role, any power to the Polish to the Polish elite. So the Polish elite couldn't uh, um, collaborate with the Third Reich because they were Slavic, and as being Slavic, they were um, they were to be eliminated. Uh, so they didn't collaborate with Hitler, not really because uh, they didn't, uh, 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 they, they were patriot and they were uh, uh, thinking uh, we have to fight for the freedom of our country and so on. Some of them did for that, that reason, but I would say quite a large part of them could have been collaborators of Hitler if Hitler would have accepted Poles to collaborate with them. Um, uh, since they, uh, Hitler, because of ideological and geostrategical reason, uh, didn't uh, accept any idea of uh, a form of Polish elite collaborating with the Nazis, it was then impossible. And that's the reason why some of them were in the resistance. They were not in re the resistance because of, of uh, uh, patriotism. They were in the resistance because they had no way um, inside the new so-called new world, a new uh, European order uh, created by Hitler. Uh, but if you take the exception of of uh, um, of um, uh, uh, of uh, Nazi time, uh, you will find that uh, uh, a lot of 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 Polish elite uh, change their uh, their. Uh, uh, collaboration all the time um, uh, according to their interests. One of the big examples um, uh, of this is what the, the prince uh, called Adam Czartoryski, 
um, who was, of course, a very uh, intelligent man, a very uh, uh, um, cultured man, a man who played a, a great role in developing Polish culture, Polish university in Vilno, which is now Vilnius, uh, in, in the Polish school education, uh, and who was, uh, to a certain extent, rather progressive in his views concerning uh, uh, social relations, but apart from that, if you look at his at his um, biography, you find him as a, um, uh, as the promoter of the last Polish king, uh, Stanisław August Poniatowski, uh, and one of his main advisors. Uh, in this simultaneously, he had very strong relation with Catherine the Second of uh, Tsar, which was uh, who was the Tsar uh, of Russia, and he was uh, he was frequently um, going to Saint Petersburg as member of the the elite, the Russian elite. Uh, after the the partition of Poland, when Poland disappeared, he was the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia uh, under Alexander. And the Tsar Alexander I, so he was a top leader of the Tsarist Russia after, after uh, having been a Polish uh, subject. Um, he was uh, 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 cooperating with Russia up to uh, uh, um, 1830. In 1830, there was an uprising in Poland, and he took side of um, of uh, 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 of the uh, uprising. He because uh, Nicolas the First, the Tsar of Russia, then was not so. Uh, um, so, so, so cooperating with him as did uh, the earlier Tsar Alexander the First. The uprising was a defeat, and then Alexander uh, Adam Czartoryski went to Paris, and he became there one of the main leader of the conservative um, uh, opposition uh, um, against uh, Russia, but very strongly cooperating with France uh, and French elite and French governments and he created a diplomatic um, uh, a diplomatic um, um, institution uh, which is called the Hotel Lambert uh, which had um, a, a, a very very developed uh, network up to Afghanistan and of course if you if you uh, take that into account that he was based in Paris, you, uh, you, you, you must accept he was very strongly cooperative with all the French governments, um, uh, which were more or less reactionary at the time. Uh, and he was, uh, of course, I would say, a, a Polish patriotic uh, 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 um, uh, party within the interest of the French um, administration and the French elite. And at the very end of his life, um, he left France for uh, Galicia, which means which which is the um, 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 Polish province under Austrian uh, 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 domination, and he became a um, collaborator of the uh, Austrian elite of the Habsburg dynasty of the Austrian Empire. So, if you uh, take uh, his biography. Uh, he was a Polish patriot, then a Russian uh, 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 high uh, minister, then a, a French um, diplomatic agent, and then an Austrian one. Um, in one life, that's quite a lot of country you 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 help uh, to uh, to uh, to uh, promote their policy. Of course, what I'm telling you is that it's very normal within the aristocratic. Uh, 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 Circles, aristocracy, aristocracy. They are not patriots. Aristocracy. They have no uh, national feeling. Aristocracy. It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's a European class which is linked by a lot of different. Um, different uh, 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 family ties, uh, economical ties, and they um, they uh, submit to different masters uh, according to the uh, evolution of the situations, and they 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 they, they, um, um, they can be uh, very conservative or a little bit more enlightened, as it was called at that time. But and Charter is rather on the side of what we can, can call the enlightened. But still, uh, basically, their class con uh, 
consciousness is not linked with what we can call the patriotism in a modern sense of the term, uh, and they, they are not uh, a civil servant of any state. Uh, and, and any nation. So um, uh, to make out of them patriots, it's a pure uh, uh, um, um, vision of the 19th and 20th century, which has nothing to do with the um, situation. And what I'm, I, I think is very important to understand, uh, and I think that the Western elite do not understand that for the moment, because um, as soon as Poland changed uh, its uh, geo uh, its uh, strategical uh, alliance in 1989, uh, the cliche in the Western world is that Poles are uh, um, fundamentally uh, anti-Russian. And they are on the side of the West because they hate Russians and so on and so on and so on. Uh, of course, the Russophobia exists in Poland and it's, it's a fact. But um, f first of all, it's not so massive as it, was, uh, as it is uh, uh, imagined in the West. That's the first thing. And the second thing uh, is that the Polish elite, as I told you, have the tradition to change um, their uh, strategical choices uh, according to the reality. Uh, so if the so-called so -called communist elite um, became pro-liberal, pro-NATO, pro-EU uh, in 1989, uh, I I'm pretty sure that if the um, balance of power in the world situation will change, tomorrow they can be pro-Russian, pro-Chinese, pro-whatever you want, as soon as the balance of power will change. And I, if I was pro-NATO, I would be very cautious to believe mm, uh, that Polish elite will be on the side of Western world, uh, if the Western world begins to uh, to uh, weaken, uh, because the, the Polish elite tradition from the eight the seventeenth century is to change their masters as soon as the master the the, the nowadays masters begin to weaken, and to go on the side of the new master when he is going stronger and stronger. And because that's the tradition of the Polish elite. Of course, I'm talking about the Polish elite. I'm not talking about the masses of the nation and so on. I'm talking about the Polish elite because it's linked with that, this uh, uh, tradition and with this nobility culture. The nobility culture is a culture which it's based on feudalism. Feudalism is not linked with, uh, with some link with a state. Feudalism is linked uh, with an uh, allegiance uh, toward a, a, a master. Um, so you, uh, you, you serve your master, and your master will protect you in the, uh, uh, on, uh, uh, as a response to the fact that you serve him. But as soon as the contract uh, is um, is uh, broken, it means as soon as the master cannot protect you, then you change master. That's the base of the feudal culture. You have a master, uh, and feudalism is made on a contract. The contract is you serve the master and the master protect you. So when the master is not able to protect you anymore, then you change master because the contract has been um, has not been kept um, and that's that's the way uh, police elite functioned in the 17th century uh, especially for example at the Saxon time uh, when the Polish kings were coming from the Sax, Sax, uh, Saxony dynasty um, the, the, uh, um, the Polish parliament because there was a Polish parliament of course a noble parliament uh, 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 changed vote according to the, 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 the presence or not presence of, for example, Russian troops. 
um, in Poland when there were Russian troops, the Russian troops uh, uh, um, uh, were around the parliament and the parliament voted exactly what the Russian, the Russian the Tsar uh, wanted uh, Polish parliament to vote and you know the majority of the big majority sometime all the deputies, the MPs didn't uh, uh, you know they accepted that uh, it was for them normal to to cooperate and collaborate with with the Russian Tsar with the Russian army um, and that's the one of the reason we didn't understood was what, what was the Polish socialism because the Polish People's Republic was of course on one side uh, a state created by communists wanted to build socialism and that's for sure but part of a party members were in fact not communist they were people that took the the uh, party card because they were uh, uh, just adapting to the new situation the same way they adapted to the Piłsudski government the same way they adapted to the uh, Tsar government uh, uh, and so on and so on and of course because of that uh, they couldn't understand the real communists that a lot of party members will change their mind in one night, which happened um, uh, in 1989. Uh, and this, uh, this, of course, was a miscalculation coming from communists. Uh, from real communists, that was a miscalculation, but we have to take into account that this tradition was not uh, was a, a tradition that was, had not been really analyzed at that time. Uh, and uh, uh, most communists believe that uh, uh, if you have a, card, a, a party member uh, uh, belonging, you are, you are a communist and you are not, in fact. You are just going the way um, uh, your, let's say, ancestors uh, uh, did if you are coming from higher classes. And if you are coming from lower classes, um, uh, it, it's all, it, it's almost uh, sometimes the same because uh, uh, the basic class in Poland was not the working class, it was the peasant. And the peasant, uh, to a large extent, were, um, were brought up uh, according to feudal norms, because what I told you earlier that uh, um, 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 feudalism is based on the idea that you submit to a master and in uh, response the master uh, uh, is supposed to protect you, it was also the ideology of peasants. It means the peasant is um, accept to submit to the landlord and in, um, in response the landlord is supposed to, um, to uh, protect his peasants. Um, and this explains the myth of uh, peasantry in Poland all over the, the history of, of feudalism. Most peasants didn't fought against feudalism. Most peasants were looking for a good master. So when their landlord was bad, they were looking for another landlord. But they couldn't imagine that um, a, a world without landlord can exist. Uh, for them, the, the only question was the good landlord, Dobry Pan. Dobry Pan in Polish, the, the, good, the good master. Um, and, uh, you know, that ideology you find in every feudal uh, 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 country, uh, the man who really developed that uh, idea uh, was Malcolm X. When he compared what he called the uh, house Negroes, with the field Negroes. Uh, the house Negroes is uh, uh, linked with his master and wants his master to be preserved because he's a good master or he's supposed to be a good master. The field Negro is, fi is fighting against uh, uh, slavery, but the house Negro is fighting for slavery, uh, even if he's a slave in, uh, himself. And that's the basic of feudalism. Um, a, 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 a lot of peasants were for masters. They were just looking for the good master. They, were, they couldn't imagine a world without master. So when a, 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 a peasant is going up 
uh, a traditionally pe oriented peasant is going up in, in the uh, social hierarchy, he's, he's behaving the same way, looking for a good master. And that's the basic problem of Polish society uh, in the 19th century and in the 20th century. It means that the uh, peasant emancipation movement, uh, mostly the so-called peasant party, uh, was a party uh, that was fighting to give peasants the, the idea that they should be, as a class, the master, and they, they cannot accept the class stratification of the society. But the peasant party was a very strong party in Poland, but was in minority. The majority of peasants were, uh, were rather uh, uh, under the influence of much more traditional, much more conservative uh, uh, um, parties and, uh, and, and mentalities. And that's the, the, the big problem of Poland up to now is that uh, uh, um, uh, even when people are coming from uh, uh, lower classes, or from working classes, they have this post-feudal way of thinking that they are looking for a good master. They are looking for a good master inside the country, within the, the frame of the country and the society. And when they go up um, uh, 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 on politics, on international politics, they are go looking for the, the good masters uh, on the international level. So the good master can be Russian, Austrian, uh, uh, German, uh, French, or American, or maybe tomorrow Chinese. Uh, I don't know, but in their mind, uh, they even if they go uh, with communists, they don't go with communists, for a lot of them, for communism. They go with communists because communists seem to be the new masters in their head, in their mentality. Um, and of course, uh, if you take that into account, you can understand that uh, what Paul needs is not only a social revolution, uh, as everywhere, I would say, in the world. But a a with the social revolution, you need the cultural revolution. It means the, uh, the thing that makes you uh, realize that you can live without master. And the question is not a good or a bad master. The question is no master. That's, <laughs> I don't know if you have a, uh, questions now. <laughs> You started from uh, 16th century, yeah. but if we if we think about the history of all thousand years of Poland, uh, we can say that uh, all history of the state of Poland from the uh, Christianism yeah. is the uh, uh, that Polish allies are. Uh, uh, Mm, how to say? Uh, firstly, I would like to uh, that um, there are few interesting things which we can uh, we can think. One is the language that the Polish elites uh, from the 10th century to uh, uh, up to I think uh, 18th 18th century they prefer to speak Latin language not uh, not uh, polish language if somebody wants to know something about the history of poland and he will take the documents of the polish parliament uh, it is not written in polish language it is written in latin uh, and after uh, they started to speak uh, French language or I don't know Russian maybe and and 20th century uh, maybe now after after the uh, contra-revolution now the Polish allies they prefer speak English so all the time the Polish allies try to find the uh, language which can uh, they can communicate with the new masters abroad the Poland so one thing it is the linguistic question it is the question also the uh, dependency poland from the vatican from the catholic church that uh, all this uh, because if we think about the history of poland that uh, polish elites were not uh, dependent in the time when polish, polish state was not catholic state 
when it was independent state with independent allies. It was a very weak state, but it was independent. Uh, started to Christianization. It's uh, the history of Poland, the history of the Christianization of Poland, this history of the dependence of Polish allies, Polish kings from the, from the Western uh, masters. And uh, it's very interesting history of the Polish king and the uh, Polish, uh, Polish, uh, Polish state, which, uh, which was destroyed uh, in the, in the time of the, uh, 1030s, 1030s after the king of the Mieszkos II, uh, it was the uprising and on Poland, uprising against feudality and against the Christianity. And the feudal state in Poland started to, was destroyed. And the Polish allies, they are, uh, are uh, went to, to Germany and with the help of the German Kaiser, uh, with the German soldiers, they come back, they started to kill the Polish peasants and they restored the feudal state. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it's important. Globally, what you said is, is right. Uh, just I, I concentrated on um, uh, 17th century up to now because Poland was a, a weak state. Um, if you take um, uh, earlier times, except the one you talk about, uh, it means the 11th century, we can say that Poland was a growing state um, from, let's say, the the 13th century up to the 16th century and the Polish elite, whatever uh, uh, they were linked with foreign culture, as you told, um, they were sufficiently powerful to um, behave in a more or less in the politically uh, independent way. Uh, and they didn't, uh, uh, um, uh, they, they were not linked with a foreign power, it let's say 14th century, 15th century, 16th century, as soon, um, but as soon as the um, Polish uh, state became too weak, and then they changed their uh, their behavior. That's first thing. Second thing, what you uh, 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 said is very important the con uh, because um, I was talking about the state culture and the um, uh, dependency of uh, um, towards foreign states. But of course, which, what is very important also, it was you show, is the cultural dependency. Um, and that's for sure the Polish culture, the, the, the official Polish culture and language uh, um, uh, people were talking in, among the elite was formed um, uh, um, uh, under the, uh, the organization of the church. Uh, of Roman Catholic Church, of church culture, of Latin language, and so on. And it's very important to know one thing um, that, of course, the, uh, the, they don't want uh, uh, us to know by now, that if the Polish language, language became a real uh, uh, autonomous language and culture, uh, especially in the 14th and especially um, 15th century, it's because of the Protestants, because um, it was a very short period in the Polish history. But the period when the Protestants were the leading force of Polish culture, I would say the, the leading force of Polish culture, and, and I explain why, because um, uh, uh, Poland was always the country uh, where the majority of the nobles were Catholics. But at the time of the Protestant Reformation, because of political uh, um, uh, programs, uh, the Protestants had the majority in the parliament. It means that the majority of the Catholic voted for Protestants because the political program of the Protestants was much more uh, uh, progressive at that time than the political program of the Catholics. And that is something very strange for the history of Europe, but you have to take it into account. And it's very important because the, the Protestants developed the idea that a Pole 
should think and use the Polish language. Um, and uh, because of, of the Protestants, even after the recatholicization of Poland, um, the Polish language had a such high level that it couldn't fall back to the situation it was it had earlier when the Polish language was um, a, a language almost not used for cultural purpose. F so from the uh, from the um, let's say 15th century up to now, a Polish language is of course a, I would say an adult language, uh, and but it's mostly due at the very beginning to uh, Protestants uh, because of Protestant schools. Protestant schools were so good in Poland at that time that most Catholic sent uh, uh, nobles, of course, because the, the schools were for nobles, that most Catholics sent their child, child, uh, children to Protestant schools. Um, uh, and it created something like a, an independent Polish culture. And even when they can, came back to Catholicism, uh, uh, they still had this, uh, this culture that Polish culture can be equal to other ones. But of course, uh, uh, as you said, basically, in spite of what I told uh, now, uh, basically, the, the, uh, the second problem of Polish elites and Polish culture and Polish nation is uh, not only this culture of masters I told earlier, but it's also this um, uh, dependent relation uh, toward Western cultures, uh, toward Roman, uh, Roman Catholic cultures, and later, of course, other culture arriving uh, uh, from the West, from leading power of the West, France, uh, uh, England, the United States now, and so on. And this, uh, this is uh, 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 something also which is very important because uh, up to now, Poles uh, um, have a, a tendency to compare themselves always with West, Western world, and they feel always in the, this situation as a peripheral country. So Poland is uh, from the uh, 18th century, uh, a peripheral country uh, uh, comparing with capitalist centers of the world uh, in terms of economy, but uh, Poland is always also a peripheral country comparing with the West in terms of um, cultural leadership. Uh, it doesn't mean that Poland is not able to create uh, a culture because we know Polish cinema, Polish literature, Polish art and so on. But the psychological, uh, uh, let's say, uh, um, uh, 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 education Paul received from the very beginning is always tending to, to, to show them that they are not really equal to Western standards, that they have to, uh, to, uh, to accept uh, Western standards. And what I told earlier, that they can collaborate with, for example, Tsarist Russia, the Polish elite, um, they do. Co they did collaborate with 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 with, uh, with uh, 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 Tsarist Russia, uh, but um, one of the elements that helped that that uh, uh, policy is the fact that um, the uh, after Peter the Great, uh, Russia could uh, be considered among Polish elite as a more westernized society than Poland was because um, because St Petersburg was you know a very beautiful uh, capital in the western uh, style uh, of architectures uh, and because um, a lot of uh, of Germ of uh, russian uh, uh, um, elite uh, in St. Petersburg were German, in fact, not Russian. Uh, Catherine II was a, was a German um, that we have to, 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 to take into account. And I would say that um, when some of the Polish elite uh, uh, um, supported communists after 1944, uh, it's not always because they were communists. It's not always because they were uh, really progressively uh, progressive people in the basic sense of the of, of the term. But it's also because Soviet Union 
could appear to them for a short time as a more developed and westernized country. Um, of course, now if you, for example, I will give you a, a, an example uh, 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 of, uh, of this that, that uh, now is completely forgotten. Uh, but um, uh, as you know, the uh, uh, architecture in Soviet Union changed quite a lot uh, in the 20s and in the 30s. In the 30s, in Soviet Union began uh, the, the dominant uh, uh, architectural rule where the so-called um, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, socialist realism. Um, and uh, uh, during the Stalin time in Poland, uh, uh, the, the architecture developed along the, the ideology of, of, of uh, uh, socialist realism. But uh, socialist realism was not presented in Poland only as a, um, um, as a uh, artistic trend coming from Russia, it means from Soviet Union, but from a Russian culture, it was presented as, and it's, fa it's, it's true, it was presented as an American culture trend because the socialist realism began not in Moscow, but in New York City at the beginning of the 20th century, uh, because New York City was a socialist town at that time. And uh, New Yorkers, New York progressive elite invented the uh, re uh, socialist realism. And uh, this is important to take into account because to make socialism be accepted in among police elite, you had to present socialism as a Western idea, even even coming from Moscow, but coming basically from the West. Um, and this is, of course, uh, to a certain extent, we can uh, we can think it's something progressive, but to a certain extent, there is some failure in that uh, in that uh, um, way of thinking because it shows that you are still slave of something alien to you. You have to be the slave of the Western world, uh, even if it would be an anti-capitalist uh, uh, Western world, but still it has to be West. Um, uh, and this is the, the second element we have to take into account, that the Polish elite change their masters uh, very easily, but in the same time, uh, they are uh, always uh, with the, uh, you know, the, the, the feeling they are inferior, culturally inferior to the West. Uh, and we can call that um, cultural imperialism, but it's a cultural imperialism accepted by uh, the uh, treacherous elite, uh, which are uh, always accustomed to the idea uh, that they cannot imagine for their country, for their culture, for their language, an equal status to uh, the leader of the world. Okay, okay. Uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's talk, talk now about, about the elites of Poland today. Huh. Yeah. And, uh, I would like to say that in the Soviet Union in 1930s, in the time of Purge, many, many of the Soviet citizens was accused that they collaborate with Japan, with German, with I don't know which country. And it was something which ashamed these people. If you collaborate with a foreign, foreign power, it is something that the uh, neighbor uh, will not uh, respect you. They don't want to speak with you. You are a traitor. And, mm -hmm. and I, I have impression that in Poland uh, today, if you are uh, taking money from Germany, or if you are taking money from the West, from the United States, it's not something that you are ashamed. It is something that you are proud. You are proud that you, you can walk uh, uh, in, 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 in Warsaw uh, with <laughs> showing the money, and this money came direct, to me, direct from the uh, American NGOs, uh, and it is uh, it's shown that I am some some uh, somebody who is very important. very important. So uh, I try to uh, I try to find the solution. What to do with 
Poland. Uh, how to change Poland uh, if the I think the m most of the political parties which existed today uh, all together all together this party in the Polish parliament they are uh, financed by the Western powers uh, and they are proud of that. Yeah, but you have one thing to to uh, which is contradictory to that is that uh, as soon as they have to fight against somebody in Poland who is not pro-Western, um, being a leftist or a rightist, but um, because you have in Poland people who um, uh, don't believe in the NATO and the Western uh, alliance uh, and are on the left side, and but you have also people uh, who are against NATO and Western alliance and are that are, for example, pro-Russian, but they are pro-Russian from uh, from right-wing point of view. But wh whatever you th think about one or the other, uh, the fact that um, these people, uh, when they uh, develop their argumentation in favor of Russia or, let's say, other countries like China or whatever you want, um, they are always accused that they have money from these countries which of course very often has no sense. But the accusation is that when you receive money from the East, it's ba bad. But when you receive from the West much more money, that's very good. And uh, it shows the inconsequency of their, be uh, of their way of thinking. Because um, if you are nationalistic and promote the idea you shouldn't have money from a country, you should not receive money from any country. Not from the one is good and the second is bad. Um, and that, that, from my point of view, is the point we have to, 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 to show. You are criticizing people linked with Russia. You are telling they are uh, 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 sold to Russian interest. Um, you are most of the time falsely accusing them of taking money from Russia. Why Russian money would be worse than the uh, Western money you are taking in, in, in an obvious way, as you say. And that, that's the line I would develop. Um, uh, 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 it's the, the unconsequency. Uh, of their argumentation, because uh, uh, you're you're not promoting independence; you're promoting selected slavery, huh? and that's the difference. Um, and I think that we should uh, concentrate on that. Uh, you are not defending independence and sovereignty; you are defending slavery. Um, uh, but of course, still it, it it works to a certain extent because, as we know now, that Solidarność, the leaders of Solidarność, received money uh, and help from the Western countries uh, during all the time of People's Poland, uh, and still, when the, it appeared that they received money not very uh, long ago, um, it was still something quite shameful. Because uh, the idea, the basic basic idea, the mythology of Solidarność was that it was a grassroots movement coming from the base of the society against uh, a, 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 a power which was linked with a foreign uh, government. Um, and then it appears that, uh, uh, of course, a lot of workers did strike for uh, uh, a, a reason that can be considered as... Uh, um, as uh, legitim legitimate, but uh, uh, the organization, the the, the, the leadership, uh, was linked um, financially and politically, of course, linked with Western powers, and and then you know it it, it created some. Um, some problem within the, the, the legitimacy of Solidarność. So, so if you go to the grassroots people of Poland, uh, the idea that you should uh, depend on foreign aids is something which is not really, really, really accepted. Uh, and we, you, can, you can work on it, uh, uh, that uh, you will never be a really uh, a, a, a free society 
uh, if you uh, depend on foreign uh, um, uh, help uh, or loans or whatever you want. Uh, it's it's something that has to be to be to be developed, but it's something you can base on because there are quite a lot of people in the uh, working class uh, which uh, are uh, ashamed the fact Poland is uh, uh, so linked with Western powers. It means you know when Poland, for example, uh, sent troops to Iraq or Afghanistan, it was not really popular among the masses, the Polish masses. Um, even now, when uh, after the you know the the, the Ryanair uh, plane uh, land in Minsk and the uh, and the so-called Pro Protasiewicz affair uh, happened, and uh, it happened uh, uh, that. Uh, um, the Belarusian opposition is uh, financed by Polish government. You had quite a lot of Polish people telling that uh, why we are uh, 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 giving this money to uh, opposition in Belarus. Belarus has to decide what they want by themselves, and this money has to be spent for Polish uh, 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 social needs and not for Belarusian uh, um, uh, opposition. Uh, 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 working for the interest of the Polish states, which are in fact the interest of the Western uh, NATO and not really the interest of Poland. So you know, it's it, uh, this this uh, um, this situation um, divide Poles, and as soon as it, it divides, it means that uh, we can work on it. Uh, and we can base uh, uh, our political uh, uh, um, uh, education on these elements. Okay, I would like uh, to know your opinion about the the, the, the Polish uh, elites are divided. Yeah, from 15 years we have uh, two most important parties in Poland. We have the Civic Platform and the Law and Justice. And something which interested me it is the Polish uh, elites who support uh, Law and Justice because in one hand. Uh, they are uh, in their mind pro-Western, uh, they want to be anti-Russian and stuff like this, but they, uh, for them, Western West is something which is uh, uh, the 1980s, uh, the time of the, of the Cold War when was Reagan, when was all this anti-communist propaganda. And for them, the, the time is, is stopped. Uh, all the time they want this uh, anti-communist hysteria. And now the, the Western countries are changed a, a, a little bit. There are the, uh, this, progressive, the, this progressive movement, changement of the LGBT questions. There are the laicization. Uh, there are new Pope, uh, which is not Polish Pope. And this new Pope is uh, uh, no. modern Pope. More and, more modern. Yes, yes, and and now in the I think that from from five years or more, the Polish allies, the Polish states ruling by the law and justice, are in the European Union is isolated, is isolated yeah. by the uh, and it is it is very funny because Polish allies in their in in their propaganda they say we are western we are european but in the same time in the european union all the time the poland is uh, ruling by the kaczynski's party are isolated mm -hmm. and this conflict between poland and the germany are very very all the time it's it's uh, uh, come back yeah. You know, but, but that's the problem, you know, when you are a peripheral country with a peripheral elite culture, you are always tending to catch up. Uh, but when you uh, 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 catch up, you are always one train behind the main train. And that's the problem of the Polish elite, of the pro-Western Polish elite, because they, uh, they dream about the West that is already disappearing. They are always one West behind the real West. Uh, 
um, and, and that's their problem. And, and they had a, a peace and the law and justice party had his uh, moment of enthusiasm when Trump arrived uh, at the White House. Because then, for the first time, they had the impression they catched up. They, they 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 were on the same line as the uh, supposedly as the White House. Everything was fine, but it was fine for five, four years, and um, and let's say the real um, the real uh, Western bourgeoisie uh, uh, took back the power because whatever we we can think about Trump, Trump was not the let's say the traditional establishment of the the bourgeoisie. He was a, a, a little bit. Uh, a, 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 uh, different and uh, but that's another question to to analyze. I don't, I will not develop that uh, that aspect. But anyway, he was not in the mainstream establishment of the world uh, of the West, and now the mainstream establishment of the way uh, the the West came back in the White House, um, uh, and uh, for law and justice, it's a very uh, difficult situation because uh, they have to come back at the situation they had four years ago before Trump. Uh, but they realize that uh, um, the West, they are uh, trying to catch up. Uh, uh, it will never be their West or their dream of what is supposed to be the West. And that explains why you see now Kaczynski uh, becoming to be, to look for, you know, for, for um, uh, uh, I would not say alternative, but he's looking for different, um, different uh, 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 solutions. He, he's developing relation with Orban. He's developing relation with Erdogan. Um, he's not. He's even uh, 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 thinking that Poland should have better relation with China. Uh, and you know, he 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 he, he is very um, unstable now. Uh, but the problem of Polish elite is that the PO, the platform of uh, the civic platform, uh, which are the liberals, uh, we are, we, which fits much more to the mainstream Western establishment, uh, they are uh, they were too long in power, and their uh, let's say uh, intellectual uh, legitimacy uh, has to a certain extent vanished. Uh, and I think we are now in the, before in front of an interesting moment in Poland because the two um, camp uh, that uh, led Poland after 1989, the liberals, let's say, and the so-called national populists, uh, whatever we think about this this uh, um, this word, uh, 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 the two camps are are uh, uh, you know they are um, tired. I would say now. Uh, and it opens uh, a door to a new situation. I know I don't know what will happen. I'm you know I'm not a prophet, uh, but uh, uh, um, it's interesting because um, the, uh, uh, the 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 West uh, poles were looking for is appearing much more unstable than it was, uh, or uh, that it was supposed to be. Uh, and in this situation, it opens new, 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 new potentials uh, because you, you, when you analyze Polish media,s when you analyze Polish uh, websites, uh, geopolitical Polish websites, you understand that there is um, emerging in Poland uh, the the. Um, idea that the West is not so stable as we, we uh, were uh, supposed to believe in, uh, that uh, the world is changing, that new power are emerging, that China is uh, becoming a, a, a strong um, country, uh, that China is linked with Russia and Russia uh, it's supposed to be the enemy, but if uh, we have to adapt to the new situation uh, and we want to have good relation with China, we have to 
to think about changing relations with Russia. Um, and if we want to, to have very good relations with Erdogan, then we have to look at the fact that Erdogan one day is pro-Western, one day is pro-Russian, uh, and he's uh, uh, opportunistic all the time. Though. So if he's opportunistic, it means that maybe opportunism is, the, uh, is something... Uh, um, uh, uh, developing in the world and Poles also have to be to a certain extent opportunistic uh, and so on and so on. So the situation is changing now, but uh, I don't know what will happen, but uh, um, uh, you know, you have something that is basically changing. Uh, it it is that from the Middle Age, as you told, uh, under uh, Christ, uh, when Poland, um, uh, uh, when Polish uh, king uh, chose uh, um, um, uh, Catholicism, Roman Catholicism, Poland was always looking at the West, and Poland was then peripheral country towards West because it was always, of course, at the border of Western Europe. Um, uh, if this country, if this Western Europe was Roman Catholic, uh, French uh, uh, Enlightenment, uh, or American imperialist, it was always, of course, at the periphery. Uh, now, if you look at the map, the situation has turned because of the development of communications. Uh, Poland is not at the periphery of the West. Poland is in the center of Eurasia. Uh, because now you have communication, you have trains linking China with Western Europe. Um, and this uh, this uh, communication didn't exist earlier. I mean, it was impossible, of course. It was difficult for Pol Poles to go to Russia uh, 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 up to the end of the Middle Age because Russia was a really backward country. Uh, but it was unimaginable to go behind Russia because behind Russia there was nothing. Uh, because China was too far and Japan and Korea and, and Eastern Asia uh, or Central Asia was too far. Now the situation has completely changed. Uh, um, uh, Poland is in the center of a new, let's say, hub. And uh, there are new opportunities for Poland. And I'm... Of course, I don't know what will happen, but uh, I'm uh, uh, interested to see if uh, there will be the development in Poland of a new thinking, uh, of a, a complete uh, cultural and geopolitical revolution, uh, making Poles look at the map, not at, his, at it was during the last thousand years, but at the map as it is now. Uh, when Poland is on the railway station from Xi'an to London. Uh, and, you know, it's, it changed quite a lot of things. It's just that Poles have to look at the map. I would like to ask you why in Poland we don't have the politician like Orban or uh, the... Um, because in Orban, many times he showed his independence. That yeah. some, sometimes he can uh, buy the vaccine from Russians. He yeah, can both. make uh, arrangements to building the central power plants uh, from Russia in, in Hungary. Uh, also, the, the uh, president of premier minister of the Czech Republic, sometimes he, he, he is... Uh, independent and he make his own decision toward the Russia. Why in in the 30 years of the capitalist Poland there are any politician who can make an independent uh, politic which is uh, uh, only in the, the interest of Poland and sometimes uh, uh, make something good for for West, sometimes for Russia, and in this balance, uh, making something that Poland will be independent. Uh, will uh, yeah, yeah. You know that's very very interesting because basically, historically, culturally, Hungary was supposed to be and was a much more anti-Russian country than Poland. 
Because, as I told you, Poland was uh, in conflict with Russia, but in the same time, quite a lot of time, police elite did collaborate with Russia. Um, in Hungary, you had not this situation. The, 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 uh, um, uh, 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 Hungary was in conflict in, with Russia uh, in the 19th century, during the, um, the um, 1848 revolution. Uh, then Hungary was with Germany um, in the First World War, in the Second World War, and then as a um, as a defeated country was integrated to the socialist uh, camp. Uh, and then you had the um, 1956 uprisings and the um, interventions of Soviet army in Budapest. So you could imagine that because of that, R Hungary would be 100% uh, anti-Russian um, and that Poland would be, let's say, 60% anti-Russian. And the situation is completely the other one because um, Hungary uh, seems to have have no, uh, um, no anti-Russian complex. Um, maybe because Hungary was a little bit more developed capitalist country than Poland, because uh, you know Budapest was for sure uh, a capitalist city with a, a local Hungarian bourgeoisie. Uh, what was not the case, which was not the case of Poland. Um, and whatever you think about bourgeoisie, you can say that bourgeoisie is a much more realistic social class than the aristocracy, uh, because it's based on money and on capitalist. And I think that cre that this created in Hungary something like a realism, a bourgeois realism, but still a realism. And the reali and 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 realist people look at the map as it is and, and not as it would like they would like to 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 see it. Um, so that's one one thing which is important. Um, and because of that, I think that Orban. Um, which is a right-wing politician, reactionary, and also uh, all that, and very similar to Kaczynski on a lot of, of, of issues. But still, uh, um, uh, Orban is a much more bourgeois-like politician than an aristocrat-like politician. And because he's a bourgeois-like politician, like the Czech politician you told about, because Czech uh, Republic is also a country which has a, a strong bourgeois tradition, um, it makes them look at the map and at the world as it is. Is. Um, and when you are a bourgeois, you know, business is business. Uh, and you can do business with whatever you want as soon as the business business is uh, is um, is good for you. Um, uh, the problem of Poland is this backward uh, post-aristocratic culture that makes you think that ideas are much more important than the material base. Uh, and because of this idealism, uh, you believe uh, in uh, anti-communism or sometimes in communism, but in an idealistic way, or you believe in the United States. Uh, um, you know, yesterday I, I, I saw an interview of the former Polish president, uh, Kwasniewski, which is supposed to be an old communist because he was ministers, minister uh, in People's Poland and then became president in the bourgeois capitalist Poland. And uh, the journalist, the Polish journalist, asked him, uh, "Are you not? Uh, what is your what is your rela uh, your opinion um, about the declaration of Biden uh, considering Russia and especially considering the Nord Stream uh, pipeline?" Uh, because he, Biden told that he will not fight against the uh, the pipeline. And Kwasniewski answered, oh, I was deceived. I mean, how can you be deceived in a bourgeois world? There is only one reality, is the balance of power. And you negotiate according to the balance of power. And you give something um, and you negotiate things according to the balance of power. So uh, as an American president, Biden may, may be a good or a bad decision. That's, uh, that's uh, another question. But he makes a decision after have, having taken into account the balance of power and what he needs from the Russian, what he will fight against Russian, according to the, you know, to the balance of power and to the reality of the material relation uh, on the world scale for the moment. Um, but it has nothing to do with uh, ideas and deception. I mean, Kwasniewski says he was deceived. But how can you be the former president of Poland 
and think that decisions are made on the basis of ideas. <laughs> he said they are not based on the, on the basis of ideas. They are based on, on material relations, on basic relations. And whatever you think about Biden, he's, t- he's taking his decision uh, on the basis of, of uh, 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 analysis, which are based on the interest of, of, uh, of a world power uh, uh, trying to... Uh, trying what, in fact? Trying to, um, uh, be, uh, to, to have good relations with Germany, because Germany is important for the United States, uh, and trying to have Russia not, on, not on, all the time on the side of Russia. So in this situation, he has to negotiate things, giving something to Germany, giving something to Russia, because it's the interest of the, um, uh, of the United States establishment. Um, and it has nothing to do, I love Russia, I don't love Russia, I love Putin, I don't love Putin, I love Merkel, I don't love Merkel, and so on. It has nothing to do with love and hate. It has to do with interest. And you have this Kwasniewski, which is supposed to be a man experienced because he was president of the country for a long time, um, and who is talking a language, you know, the aristocracy of the 18th century could have talked, but not... No, not. no, but it, it is, it's shown that Kwasniewski make his uh, political education in the time of socialism and in socialism it is ideas so after he chosen capitalism but he don't understand that in capitalism it is materialistic it is not uh, idealistic that's the point and that's that's why Kwasniewski is not Orban <laughs> you know you understand okay. he he is not he cannot be Orban and Kaczynski cannot, okay. cannot be Orban also okay. Uh, because they, they, they are different politicians. Of course, Kwasniewski is from another uh, political uh, 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 um, uh, party than Kaczynski, but they, they all think the same way. Um, um, uh, is Biden a good man or a bad man? He's a good master or a bad master? He's another, it's a bourgeois man. He's thinking in a bourgeois way. Uh, he's not thinking in a, in a idealistic way. Of course, capitalism is purely materialistic. <laughs> and that's for sure. But it's very funny, Kwasniewski, after 30 years of capitalism, cannot understand that. Okay, my last question. Could you compare the relations between... United States and Poland uh, and uh, the uh, elites of Poland with the relations France with the uh, ex-French colonies in Africa and <laughs> also which, which allies uh, which are there. Uh, do you f- see similarities or could you compare this? No, but that's very interesting because you have a man in Poland who is very interesting. I mean, he's a right-wing man. He's not a, a, a left-wing man, but uh, it's a Polish economist, which is called Witold Kiezun. Uh, and Witold Kiezun uh, worked quite a lot in Africa. And um, he, 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 he is very, um, very conscious of how Africa was exploited by... Uh, uh, foreign colonialists and especially of course the French colonialism and uh, uh, it was very funny because in one of his video you can look at the video in, in YouTube uh, he's telling that comparing Burundi and Poland Poland is the Burundi of Europe uh, <laughs> you know because he, he obviously he worked quite a lot of time in Burundi so he knows better Burundi than other African countries. But when he explained that, he explained that very rationally. It means in, it's not just a slogan that Poland is the Burundi of, of, of Europe, uh, but he, 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 he analyzed that because he's an economist. He analyzed that on the economic point of view. And he says the, 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 the way the relation Poland has with the Western world is the same way the uh, African uh, neo-colony have with their former uh, uh, masters in the West. 
uh, it means a dependent economy, uh, an economy uh, which is not uh, uh, autonomous, which is not creative, which is uh, completely submitted to the uh, uh, center of the capitalist uh, globalized uh, imperialistic economy. Uh, and, you know, uh, of course, uh, maybe it can seem quite caricatural this what he's talking about but it's right rather true true of course maybe you will say yes but poles are living in a better have a better standard of living of than burundi people but the basic situation is not the standard of living the basic situation is that is the uh, the way uh, 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 relation of dependencies are um, are um, are uh, 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 working uh, uh, because of course Poland because it's geographically uh, uh, nearer Germany has a little bit more from the German capitalists than the Burundi peasant in his uh, in his uh, 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 countryside but basically the relation Burundi has with Europe is the same type of relation than Poland has with uh, German capitalist and uh, and um, uh, EU Western capitalist. And that's what we have to understand. Um, uh, and that explains that uh, the, um, the French colonialism now is a French neo-colonialism um, and uh, uh, the dependency of former uh, African colonies uh, towards France are uh, uh, direct. I direct because you, the, the, the French money you have in former uh, French colonies is what is called the CFA franc. Uh, which is a money produced in France, um, and part of the uh, of the um, uh, of the monies uh, uh, so-called independent former French colony states have uh, must be uh, in French banks, not in African banks. The same. The same happened with former uh, British colonialism, because, for example, uh, nobody will tell you. But because we, you 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 hear very often the, that uh, Qatar or the United Arab uh, um, Emirates are very rich states and so on and so on, but you don't know that all the uh, 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 um, all the money uh, the state the United Arab State uh, Emirates have and all the money Qatar have must be put not in a local bank but in a london bank and that's according to the treaty of so-called independence of qatar and united arab emirates what it means it means that um, united arab emirates qatar mali uh, central african republic gabon etc etc they cannot do any substantial economical decision without the agreement of the paris government or the british government that's called colonialism. Colonialism under a new uh, uh, appearance, because there is a local president, there is a local army, there is a local flag, and there is a local hymn. But in fact, um, that's colonialism. Uh, that's a new form of, let's say, much more, quote, civilized capitalism uh, and colonialism but it's it's still uh, uh, colonialism uh, and what people have to understand in Poland and in central eastern europe because it's the same thing for baltic country for slovakia for romania for bulgaria for croatia and so on or greece uh, um, uh, it's that they they must understand that they are also uh, in a neo-colonial situation, that they cannot uh, 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 take decision uh, uh, um, without the agreement of Brussels. Uh, we have to know that inside the European Union, 75%, 75 of all laws are laws produ produced in Brussels, not in local local parliaments. They are produced in Brussels and they are adopted to the local uh, um, uh, national uh, uh, um, legislation uh, by the national parliament. And when we say that they are decided in Brussels, of course it 
this is not decided in Brussels by all the members of the of the uh, 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 European Union on an equality by uh, uh, basis. It's decided by what what is called the Eurogroup. What is the Eurogroup? The Eurogroup it is the reunion of the ministers of finance of the European Union. But uh, this is the same. Uh, of course, formally in the Eurogroup, you have all the ministers of finance uh, from Luxembourg up to Poland, from Portugal up to Sweden. But in fact, of course, the ministers of finance are depending on the um, European Bank. And the European Bank is, the, is, a, is a based in Germany uh, and it's a so-called independent bank. Uh, which is led by uh, German capitalists with some participation of French, Italian, uh, Belgian and, and Dutch capitalists. Uh, and that's the nucleus of European Union. So the 75% laws you adopt in, in Paris, in Warsaw, in Athens, in Lisbon, are in fact laws decided by the Central European Bank the Frankfurt Central European Bank, um, which is a typical colonial uh, uh, way of, uh, uh, of, uh, of controlling countries. So um, the Central European Bank decide for all European Union. The French government decide from, for uh, Afer African monies. Uh, the British government decide for uh, Arabic monies. Uh, and all that makes that uh, the situation is a typical colonial situation. Um, but of course, uh, who will tell you about nobody? Why? Because the medias, who, to whom belong the medias? They belong either to the state, either to private interest. If they belong to private interest, they are di directly linked with the colonial power. Uh, uh, in Frankfurt, in Brussels, in Paris, in Berlin, in Washington, in Wall Street. So, of course, you will have no uh, no way to find any article about any news about that in TVN or Gazeta Wyborcza, because it's strictly impossible. And of course, you will not find it in um, TVP, uh, because TVP is state owned. And that uh, uh, Polish government is linked with that all uh, uh, network based on in Brussels. So what they can uh, quarrel about, what they can quarrel about, LGTB question. That's a question you can talk about. Abortion you can talk about. Because for the capitalists, it's a purely secondary question. I don't say it's a secondary question for women. Uh, the abortion law, for example, or the right of the gays for the gays, that's very important for them. I don't, I don't uh, 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 deny that. But from the capitalistic point of view, the fact that you have a, a same-sex marriage or that you have or have no right of abortion, it's a completely secondary question. So let the local uh, uh, people be divided on those issues the basic issues are under control. I have uh, one more, the last question, because all the time we speak about allies, but uh, in the political parties in Poland, there are also in leftist parties, uh, there are people who are not economic allies. Yeah. This is the people from... <laughs> yeah. Uh, they are maybe not uh, working class, but they are uh, precariat uh, intelligentsia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, how it is happened that these uh, people, which is, very often they are uh, organized in the leftist parties, social democratic, trade unions, all these, uh, they produce the, the leftist media, uh, very often they are uh, mainstream. Uh, uh, ma yes, yes. The uh, mainstream. Uh, they are th the way of thinking. Dependence of to the West is the, uh, the same that the Allies. According to me, of course, we can discuss about that. There are two reasons. Uh, the first reason for Poland is what I told you earlier: is the cultural dependency. 
uh, from generation to generation, all the elite were formed that you have to choose master. So they want master. Even if they say they are for democracy, they are for sovereignty, uh, basically, consciously or unconsciously, they are looking for the good master. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is that uh, they are um, uh, 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 linked with that, they are idealistic. So they think like Kwasniewski, uh, which is supposed to be a social democrat, uh, so at least a lefty, leftist man, they are, um, they, 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 they are linked with uh, the idea that um, um, uh, they, um, uh, they um, depend on the West, because West is culture, West is development, uh, so they have to look at the West. And of course, there is another element which is very important. Uh, is there? It's their standard of life, living. These people, they are not completely proletarians. They are objectively proletarians, but they have a little bit better situation because they have. They are used by uh, uh, the um, uh, dominant powers, so they receive money. They don't receive a lot of money, but they receive grants. They receive funds. Um, from NGOs, from foundations, from uh, European Parliament, from um, uh, uh, different organizations. So they are uh, a little bit, let's say, happier than the precarious working man uh, in, um, let's say, the coal mine in Silesia. Uh, and they don't want to lose that uh, uh, um, that uh, uh, social and economical status. And, you know, everything is made for that because um, trade unions, trade unions, most of them uh, uh, belong to what is called the um, uh, European Confederation of, uh, Confederacy of uh, Trade Unions, which is um, subsidized by the European Commission. Commission, European Commission, which is under control of Eurogroup, a Eurogroup which is under the control of the Central European Bank. So, and directly, uh, the leader of the main trade unions in Poland, Solidarność and OPZZ, are paid by Brussels. Are paid by Brussels. Same thing in France. I mean, the leader of, of all um, uh, trade unions in France they have a salary of 5,000 euro per month. 5,000 euro per month, paid by Brussels. Uh, 5,000 euros, it's quite a lot, comparing with the average salary of a French worker, not talk, to talk about a Polish worker. <laughs> Uh, um, so you don't want to, to, to resign from that, especially that the 5,000 euros are uh, just, you know, your pocket money. Because in the same time, you're invited in conference, you're invited to um, uh, reunions where you uh, eat uh, for free, where your hotel is paid for free. Uh, so in fact, you receive much more than 5,000 euros. Uh, and it's the same thing with European parties. The parties which are um, member of the so-called European parties, it can be uh, liberal, conservative, or left parties. The so-called European parties, the status of European parties, who did it? Tony Blair. Tony Blair um, uh, um, uh, uh, invented the concept and the, uh, the rule of the European parties. European parties, it's 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 a it's a, it's a, a, a it's an institution to control political parties, because there is no such thing like a let's say European left parties. Officially, there is something like a European left parties. But if you are in Poland, if you are in France, if you are in Germany, if you are in Italy, nobody knows what is the European left party. Because if you are in France or in Poland, you know SLD, you know um, uh, 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 Razem, you know uh, French Communist Party, you know French Socialist Party, and so on and so on and so on. Um, but you don't know that all these parties are supposed are, are belonging to the European Social Democratic Party, to the European left parties. Uh, 
which are paying the uh, 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 high hierarchy of those parties. So the same thing you have in the, the trade union, you have in the political parties. The leadership of SLD is financially dependent on Brussels. And the salary of the leadership of SLD is dependent on Brussels. That I, I, I told you about uh, parties. If I go down to foundations, Foundations, especially German foundations, they are, they are linked with the system and they finance uh, uh, initiatives uh, uh, um, in Germany, in Europe and in Africa. Because, for example, the uh, different uh, 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 political foundations supposedly linked with German parties are funding different events and initiatives in Tunisia, in Poland, in Hungary, in Italy, uh, in uh, Chad, or wherever you want, or in Brazil. Um, why? They are financing that because uh, um, it corrupts the political elites of those countries. You, you have to know, for example, you have a, 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 a foundation which is supposed to be a very good foundation if you accord to the name, the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation. The Rosa Luxemburg Foundation, as the name is showing, is supposed to be a very radical leftist foundation linked with the German left party, which is Die Linke. But Die Linke is belonging to the European left party, and the uh, Rosa Luxemburg Foundation is financed by whom? By the German state. And every year, the German, uh, the, the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation should do a report to the German state authorities showing how they, they, they um, spend their money in accordance to the state policy of the Federal Republic of Germany. Uh, so, in fact, the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation is the corrupting agent of the German imperialism in the, uh, in the, um, uh, in the left, as the Adenauer Foundation is the corrupting agent of German imperialism in the right. And the Friedrich Ebert Foundation is the German uh, imperialism agent in the center left, and so on and so on, with the Green Foundations and so on and so on and so on. So you have level of NGO, level of foundation, level of political parties, and level of trade unions, which are linked with Brussels, which are linked with the European Bank. Fi uh, finally, they are linked with the European Bank. So why would you like a left opposition, a real left opposition exist? Of course you have. In the European Parliament, you have the, French, the Greek Communists and the Portuguese Communists. That's the, two, the only two communist parties that don't want to belong to the left European party because they want to be independent. So, of course, a, a Greek MP at the Brussels Parliament is an independent MP. But how many have you such MPs in the 600,000 uh, Parliament? You have maybe 10 deputies, 10 MPs, which are really independent. I mean, the Portuguese and the Greek communists, maybe some more, I, I'm, I, I, maybe you have 15 uh, uh, in this Parliament, but they, have, they are, they are uh, free. But who, what can they do? They, they cannot do nothing because they are just a, a few. Um, and of course, the media will do everything not to let them be known. Um, uh, in, Pol in, in their own country first, and of course, outside of their country uh, in the second uh, uh, position. Uh, and this situation uh, explains why the Polish left doesn't exist, because there is no Polish left. Of course, there are leftists in Poland, but there is no Polish left in the sense that there is a party 
which is independent, or a trade union, which is really independent from Brussels. Of course, there you have some trade union, like Inicjatywa Pracownicza or something like that, but it, it, they are tiny unions or a tiny party, and they will never appear in the media. They will never uh, uh, um, uh, 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 create an event people will know about. Uh, 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 um, you know it very well. I mean, uh, um, uh, uh, go in the street of Poland and ask uh, uh, 100 people if they, uh, uh, which party exists in Poland. They will tell you about PO, they will tell you about peace, they will tell you about SLD, they will eventually tell you about Razem, but they will never tell you about the communists, about the workers' party, about things like that, because they don't know it exists. Because media don't talk, don't talk, talk about that. So, uh, 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 and if you, you talk about trade unions in Poland, ask most people of Poland, they will tell you Solidarność or PZZ. But of course, these two unions are, 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 are unions paid on the payroll of Brussels. So <laughs> they, they will not work for the working class. They will work for the bourgeoisie. They, they, are, they, they were created in that purpose, considering Solidarność, and they were corrupted uh, after they kicked out Miodovic, which was the last uh, union leader that had tried to preserve something from socialism. Okay, thank you, Bruno. It was very sad what you said. Yeah, that's but, I agree with. But the reality, we have it's to not. speak about truth. Only truth is interesting. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and okay, if we, so. especially if we, 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 we want to change it, we have to first to know it. 